It's called Landing Site 2, a section of moon landscape covering roughly three by six and one half miles. If all goes as planned, the first Americans will land and explore a portion of this area. Astronauts Neil A. Armstrong, Edwin E. Aldrin, and Michael Collins, the three men who will make the next and most historic round trip to the moon. It is Collins who will be in charge of the cone-shaped command module, circumnavigating the moon as his two compatriots descend and land on the lunar surface. Born in Rome, Italy, October 31, 1930, Collins served as pilot during the three-day Gemini 10 mission in 1966. Here, he describes the events leading up to his joining NASA. Well, I was a fighter pilot for a number of years at various uh, bases at, in California and overseas in France and in Germany. And then I went to the test pilot school at Edwards, uh, and I was a test pilot there for a couple of years and went back again to the uh, what, what was then called the Aerospace Research Pilot Course, and then following that came to work for NASA. Astronaut Buzz Aldrin, the lunar module pilot, will fly with Armstrong to touch down on the moon. It was Aldrin who established a new record for time outside a craft in space, more than five and one half hours during Gemini 12. The 39-year-old astronaut has an impressive background, including a doctorate. I attended uh, public uh, schools in my hometown of Montclair, New Jersey, uh, received an appointment to the United States Military Academy at West Point. Uh, I was commissioned in the Air Force, flew in the Korean War for about six months, sent over to Germany flying F-100 aircraft. In 1959, applied for admission into uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology to study uh, astronautics in greater depth, leading toward a Doctor of Science degree. Command pilot for this first landing, astronaut Neil Armstrong. It will be Armstrong who steps cautiously out onto the moon for the first time. Armstrong had this to say about space and going to the moon. I suppose every, uh, every age of history has had its challenges of the time. It seems to me we're particularly fortunate in our age of history to be faced with perhaps one of the the greatest challenge is to go out into space to, to break the, the shackles of gravity and find the answers to questions that have been uh, asked by scientists and philosophers alike for, for years it is certainly one of the most exciting challenges of all time. But I think even more, more important than the answers that we'll be able to find the answers about the origin of our solar system and the answers about how we can most practically exploit this new knowledge will be the fact that we'll get a whole bunch of new questions that we've never before even thought to ask. And this will be the, the challenge to the next generation. Once on the moon, Armstrong and Aldrin will take photographs, dig for lunar soil samples, collect rock specimens, and set up scientific experiments to remain after they have left. To gain data about the moon's interior and meteoroid impacts, they will deploy a device for recording seismic activity. Another experiment will precisely measure Earth-Moon distances. The crew of Apollo 11 have been preceded by 15 unmanned lunar explorers. These first close-up photographs were recorded by a Ranger spacecraft just before it slammed into the Moon's surface. Following Ranger, Surveyor, craft which soft-landed and verified that a man could walk there. Charting and mapping of mountains, craters, and other surface features was the job of Lunar Orbiter. This high-flying picture-taker 
helped determine the best landing sites for the Apollo astronauts. It's called Spacecraft 107, housing for the three men as they fly to the moon and back. The onboard oxygen, water, food, and electricity provide a self-contained bit of Earth environment for the astronauts. The command module is approximately 12 feet by 12 feet in size and weighs 13,000 pounds with the crew at liftoff. Through the years, the Apollo command module has been put through many rigorous tests. Some, like this one, to prove its seaworthiness. Connected to the command module is the 22-foot-long service module, weighing 51,000 pounds. In addition to the rocket engine for returning the men to Earth, it holds oxygen supplies and fuel cells. There was no room for error in the development of the spider-like lunar module, which will actually land on the moon. It must do its job. It must be able to descend to the lunar surface, land, and take off at mission's end. This is the craft assigned to that first moon landing. The lunar module is in two parts. The bottom stage, with its descent engine, will lower astronauts Armstrong and Aldrin gently to the lunar surface on a pillar of rocket exhaust. This stage then acts as a launching platform for the upper section, with its ascent engine lifting the two men back up to join Michael Collins, orbiting in the command ship. The combined spacecraft is shown here during final checkup. The Saturn V rocket, which will boost Apollo 11 off the launch pad and toward the moon, is put together inside the vehicle assembly building at the Kennedy Space Center. When the three stages and guidance unit are locked in place for rollout to pad 39A, the giant space vehicle stands 363 feet high, powerful enough to thrust a 50-ton payload into lunar orbit.